My Terso database was replaced with someone else's database. It has wallet information, etc. I'm not reading it, but I want my data back because my project fails now. What happened here? We have to talk about this. Terso started as an edge first database, but it's gone much further and is focused on being the simplest way to connect to SQL like databases and run them. For those who are curious who are watching me as I'm filming this, they're moving away from the edge messaging and I wanna make sure I don't push that too hard in the video because that's not like the important part and they understand that, which I think is dope. Terzo is trying to rethink how we actually use SQLite in production from spinning it up to replicating it, to giving customers access to their own databases, anything you would need to do to take advantage of SQLite as a really performant, fast, scalable solution. Terzo is focused on doing that. That said, they're doing things very differently, which has some inherent risk to it. And that's why we see problems like this. I shouldn't say so definitively that's why, there could be plenty of other reasons, but we're gonna dive in because within a few hours of Galstar reporting this terrifying infrastructure failure, which I want to be very clear, this level of failure is never acceptable. Mistakes suck, and I'm sure there was a lot of good learnings from this, but this is a terrifying thing to have happen to your service. And I fully sympathize with Galstar for calling us out on Twitter because of how scary and terrifying this was, but I also know how rough it can be as a developer and a founder to have problems like this happen which is why I think it's important for all of us to go through the blog post, understand what exactly happened and how we can prevent failures like this going forward. So let's take a look at this blog. Incident 2023-1204, data leak and loss in some free tier databases. Interesting that it's only in free tier. We'll, we'll see why. So what happened? 0.07% of databases under management were incorrectly configured with an empty backup identifier, which caused a data leak. The conservative fix we applied to the leak led to the possible loss of the most recent data in those databases. So a change was made on November 20th for an identifier that was meant to be used for backfill. On December 1st, internal procedures led to those backups being used to recreate the databases. This was noticed and reported on December 4th at 8, 10 a.m. and fixed by 9:17, so about an hour and seven minutes. What was the root cause? Databases on Terso's free tier may scale to zero after one hour of inactivity. They are scaled back to one automatically upon receiving a network request. Usually this is completely invisible to the users except for added latency on that initial request. However, in rare situations, our cloud provider, Fly, is unable to restore the process due to lack of resource availability in the host. In these cases, we destroy the machine and recreate it from an S3 backup. Each database has separate backup identifiers through which we know which snapshot to restore. From time to time, we migrate databases to newer versions. A bug in that process caused some databases created to use an empty backfill identifier. Effectively, the database in that small set were now sharing a backup storage bucket. In effect, instead of pointing to S3 colon slash slash bucket slash backup ID, the affected databases were pointing to S3 bucket. When some databases failed to scale back to one, recreation happened from a shared location, the null ID. This caused both the data loss and data leak mentioned above. It seems like what happened was a bunch of buckets didn't have a backfill proper. So a bunch of user on the free tier, their databases didn't have a proper identifier internally. So instead of going to their unique database, all of their traffic got conglomerate into this one imaginary like null ID reference. That's terrifying. We fixed the issue by rerunning the migration with the correct parameters and recreating the affected databases with their December 1st backups to the correct backup ID. Since we considered any data past December 1st to be shared between those databases, any writes done after that point were discarded. That's three days of data loss. That's not great. I yeah, that's, that's scary. I feel like the reliability of a lot of these newer database tools isn't the best at the moment. This is the thing I have not wanted to do, but I get asked about it enough, I kind of feel obligated to. Neon's the other one of these newer database providers, and they somewhat recently changed the UI here to hide how bad it's been. They've had like many multiple hour outages and they're down to one nine of reliability. So they hid the nines of reliability from this page because it makes them look not great. There's just so many days with incidents. It's it's scary. I Be careful with the database you pick. This isn't as simple as like, you, you pick Terso if you like SQLite or you pick Neon if you like Postgres. Like this isn't that simple. There are real problems here and I'd be careful. Obviously, Planet Scale sponsors the channel. They've been relatively stable. There's still a risk there. I wanna be clear. You're still a risk when you're betting on one of these database startups. That is way lower if you go spin up RDS yourself in like AWS. I think the benefits outweigh the negatives more often than not, but you do need to be careful when you make these bets. Cockroach is probably the furthest along 
long, I would argue. Is aren't already familiar with Cockroach, kind of similar to Neon. They are a Postgres fork for serverless scalability. Pretty good stuff overall. I've heard nothing but fine things and they're, they've been around forever. They're relatively reliable. So I would still be okay with both Cockroach and Planet Scale. But these newer era things that are really trying to reinvent stuff are a bit more scary to me. We fixed the issue by rerunning the migration with the correct parameters. Yep, yep, yep. How do we know which databases were effective? We were able to determine all databases pointing to an invalid and shared backup ID by querying metadata for databases with the faulty backup ID. Yeah, so you just select all of the things where the backup ID is null, and now you have the list of all of the affected people. Lessons learned and remediation. While we know the root cause quite well by now, there are still a few things we must do to ensure this never happens again. Some of these things are internal processes, and others are improving our current mechanisms. In both of these cases, we will take this very seriously and have diverted a majority of our engineering efforts to prevent any further data loss and data leaks. Preventing these is the zero goal for Terso. Good, that is ahead of all the other goals. While we have not fully reviewed every piece of code related to the incident, we have already identified a few big ticket items that may have already fixed and or we planned on fixing ASAP. As part of this, we are expecting the following changes. Four points. First is additional internal checks for both our control plane and data plane to ensure backups are for the correct database. This also means improving the data isolation in our backups, similar to how we've had data isolation for our running databases. Two, improve our ability to check for faulting configurations and to self-heal or notify a team member there's an issue so we can fix it. Essentially, have a narrower band of allowed configurations and to be more strict by default. Three, improve our deployment methods to prevent migrations from breaking backup IDs. And four, add better mechanisms for being notified of security incidents, either via Twitter or via email. Please reach out if you notice anything. Summary. We're embarrassed for this incident and the pain that it has caused for our customers and our team. We have and will be implementing improved processes to prevent this in the future. We need to be more rigorous going forward about how we handle data and practices that we use to prevent these issues. This will have my full attention and priority going into the new year as we plan to provide better features for data isolation and multi-tenancy. Thanks to Schles for notifying us and allowing us to get a solution quickly. We hope we can regain some of the trust from the community going forward. I think this is a great blog post overall. There is danger inherent to the way they're doing things and I wish they mentioned that a bit more. This is arguably part of the problem with scale to zero, especially when you're scaling to zero with something stateful, like your database, is in order to go from zero back to one, you now have to do a restore, which is a little bit scary to have to do. And when you're doing it at this scale, and now you're relying on a third party provider having their IDs in the right places to make sure they restore and suspend the right thing at the right time. That's inherently a bit scary compared to something like Vitas with Planet Scale. This is why Planet Scale's free tier sucks, why it's just one database, because they're actually spinning up a box that's dedicated to you in your Vitas instance. Again, Terso is an infrastructure level innovation where they're rethinking not just how we connect to a database, but how we run our databases. That type of change is going to have more risk inherently. And as such, we're going to see issues like this. And I don't think this is just going to affect Terso, and I don't think this is the last time we're going to see it. But this level of transparency from the founder, this aggressively and quickly, has me more excited for them as a whole. They're taking these problems seriously. They're being very generous to people who are affected by them. Would I put my social security number in a Terso database right now? Probably not. But would I use it for an app that I'm building? Probably. It's in a good state overall. That's all I got. I love talking about databases. I'm curious how you guys feel though. What recent database technologies have you been interested in? And do things like this give you a bit of concern as you go forward? I'm still going to be trying out a lot of these new technologies, but you need to be careful because not everything is perfectly reliable. And when you're using these new solutions, things are going to break. Shout out to the Terso team for being as responsive and on top of things that they have been giving the free subscriptions for life to all the affected people, and also being cool with me covering it so soon after it happened. I know it's scary having an influencer come out and just read and tear apart your product, but you guys are working really hard and I appreciate you all a ton. Keep up the good work. Good seeing you guys as always. If you want to hear me talk more about databases, I'll pin a video in the corner where I compare a bunch of them. And right below that, YouTube seems to think you like something else. Appreciate you all a ton. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace, nerds.